Hi there, my name's Sally Cathcart from The Curious Piano Teachers and I'm here to help you add sparkle to your piano teaching. So in today's video, this is the first video in our sparkle series. Sparkle standing for singing, patterns, automatic, rote, knowledge, landmarks and enjoy. And today I'm going to be telling you a bit more about the very first one, which is sing. Now, in this video, we're going to cover why it's important to sing, even though we're teaching the piano, and what to do if you're not feeling very confident about singing, and what to do if your pupils are struggling with finding their singing voice or just don't want to sing. So by the end of it, you'll go be able to go away and teach a song with confidence and know how to encourage your pupils as well. So let's start by looking at the very first one. Why sing? Well, singing is our most direct musical experience. It happens in the body. And therefore, when we sing, we are at our very closest, at our, very, at, at our most musical, if you like. Horowitz said, you know, what he's trying to do is to make the piano sing. And that's absolutely true. What we do when we play is we try to make the piano sing. We try to make it res uh, resemble the human voice in many cases. Toscanini was a, was a rubbish singer, I believe. He had a voice that sounded very like a, a rasp, but he used to sing all the time to the orchestra because it was his form of communication. So singing is absolutely vital. We cannot play the piano if we're not prepared to sing in some shape or form. That is not the same as learning to sing. We're just talking about singing as a form of musical uh, communication, if you like. So the second thing, well, this is to do with what to do if you're feeling not very confident. And I often get asked by people, you know, Sally, I'm not a singer. I can't sing. How can I possibly do singing? Well, it's not, as I've just said, it's not about you being a singer. Um, I completely get that you don't kind of really feel that you know exactly what you're doing. So the first thing to do, I would say, is to take a song, just a very simple song, and to make sure that you know it learn it and memorize it be able to practice it for at least a week if not two weeks before you do it with any pupil in a lesson and also really kind of explode the song so that you know all sorts of different things you could do with it if you wanted to depends on what you particularly want to bring out of that song but you have to feel confident with that song and you can only do that through practicing it yourself so if you don't think you've got a good voice, it really doesn't matter at all because it's not the vocal quality that matters. It's your energy and the enthusiasm that you bring and that you share with your pupil. That's really what matters. So go away, learn a song, be able to sing it from memory, practice it with a camera, practice it in front of the mirror, practice it to the dogs. I often go around the house sort of singing at the, the latest little song, much to the annoyance of my husband. So it might be best to do it very privately. So the third point that I'm looking at is pupils who struggle to sing or who are uh, um, reluctant to, to join in. I have a pupil like this at the moment, a little girl. I know she can sing because I know she sung a solo um, in church and things. But in the lesson, she, she's very shy about joining in. I'd, I, that's not a problem to me because I know she can sing. The real secret is to make the song have an, an action, a game something that distracts, something that is high energy, because the singing really then becomes second place and children forget that they're singing. They're so keen to join in, you know, so it, it, it might be, um, I like coffee, I like tea, can you catch this ball from me? A very simple little thing, just with a little clapping game. Um, or it might, you might say, oh, can you do something a little bit more complicated can you think of something they get so wrapped up in playing the game and the energy that you're you're showing sharing with them that they just sing on the whole and then you've got pupils who are actually very reluctant to sing because they don't think they can sing so there are alternatives here and one way in is to do a chant um there are lots of you know chants that you could do h e l l o this is how you say hello. Keep the beat with your feet. Can you feel your heart beat, for example? Great little chant. 
lots of things you can do. Keeping the beat with your feet, clapping the rhythm, um, doing it in your thinking voice. It doesn't all have to be sung if the pupil is really reluctant to. So S for sing. Let's quickly go over those three points again. I've said why singing is important because it is our most direct musical experience. You can gain in confidence and um, authority, but you do need to practice it. So you, the teacher, need to know that song really well. And thirdly, if you have pupils who are not are reluctant to join in, then either use a chant, but make sure whatever you do, that you engage the pupil with a game or activity and keep the whole thing really um, high energy with lots of enthusiasm. Also, the other thing is keep it really short. You don't have to go on with the song for a long time. Really short portion of the lesson. So that's just one idea for how to add sparkle to your teaching. Tomorrow I'll be back and tomorrow I'm going to be looking at the P and P is for patterns and the importance of patterns when we're learning to read notation. I'm Sally Cathcart from The Curious Piano Teachers. Hope to see you tomorrow. Bye for now.